Dasta Zuriki, the Little Switzerland neighborhood. The somewhat insular commercial and social structures of early Sensuka were finally penetrated by the Swiss when the young monarch, Bolodi II's fondness for cuckoo clocks, finally enabled their access, still otherwise closed to other foreign corrupting influences. Swiss were imported to build Bolodi's great imperial cuckoo clock, thought to be the largest such clock ever built and a host of the workers remained, settling into the Dasta Zuriki neighborhood, known as Little Switzerland. Its Zurich Street is lined with shops selling imported Swiss products and home to many restaurants serving both Swiss and Sensukian dishes. A Sensukian child's visit to the Dasta Zuriki's quaint curio shops with surrounding images of white mountains blonde dairy maids, and windowsills filled with flowers could mark the beginning of a lifelong fascination with all things Swiss. But maybe traveling there, he might discover that the place he has dreamed about was never to be found. The essence he was looking for remained in the mysterious Dasta Zuriki shop's dim light and the odors of strong cheese floating over the stacks of fondue pots and cowbells. However, near the far end of Dasta Zuriki's stone pier, a Swiss sailor wearing the traditional lederhosen breeches sits on a mooring post. His pose gives him a somewhat wistful air as he gazes off to sea, dreaming, perhaps, of the mountains of his native land. A neighborhood beauty remembered, Naramoa in Peliasti. It is not uncommon in the older neighborhoods of Sensuka to come across a Naramoa, or local love, remembrance. Emperor Belodi III had decreed that neighborhood councils create an emblem of the district's pride often a monument to a local beauty recalled by the elders. This Naramoa on Peleosti Street is said to be a baker's daughter, the youthful fantasy of erecting council members now long dead. Her name is forgotten, but just a few years older than they, she had dominated their dreams. How their hearts once contorted with agony and anticipation. Oh, that wonderful agony, where did that feeling go when their mothers would send them out with six shillings to buy a loaf of bread and six currant buns, please? Uh, no, no, thank you. Uh, that's all. Following the 17 years' war, commemorative monuments to slaughtered young men became the preferred signifiers of local community spirit. A neighborhood best avoided after dark. It's a strange thing about those old narrow streets by the river in the eastern part of the Sefleury district. By day, the area is really quite picturesque and charming with its cobbled passageways, its ancient doorways, shuttered balconies, and mythical creatures between the high stone buildings. But after nightfall, after nightfall, it becomes the horror land, the land of sordid and irreparable crimes, of flinching memories and sickening despair, of fathomless loneliness and dangling feet.
Tizabu Park and Prison. Sinsuka can also be a heartless place. Few projects, for instance, could have been more maliciously conceived than Tizabu Prison. Its building consists of an immense stone block, seven stories high. The upper floors are entirely occupied by jail cells, laid out to give each one a view of the adjacent Tizabu Park through a small barred window. Part of the same city project, the park is a magnificent recreational green space. On most evenings, there is live music from the bandstand and people congregate to dance or have a drink at one of the outdoor wine gardens. The park displays the doubly useful aim of providing entertainment for its citizens as it delivers just punishment to the prison inmates. For indeed, the suffering endured by these prisoners alone forever in their tiny cells and regularly confronted with the terrible reality of other people's happiness can scarcely be imagined. Today it is raining heavily and the park appears empty, save for a few people who have taken refuge under the bandstand, the evening's concert canceled. The inmates will thus be given a brief reprieve a few silent, gloomy hours in which the world around them will seem to be in sympathy with how they're feeling inside. The Convent of the Holy Virgin of the Most Pure and Sacred Heart The sisters of the convent in Sensuka have taken every precaution to preserve their ward's innocence by constructing a moat around the perimeter of a very high-walled and small-windowed complex. References to romance have been redacted from the library's books, along with any images of excessively handsome young male saints. And yet, and yet for all that, there will be times when the peculiar expression on a girl's face will give a sister pause and set her wondering.